Vi kör då. Season 5, episode 1. You ready? Season 5. Season 5, episode 1. You excited? Yes. yes. Has Jesus. season 5. Is this in the fifth year? No. Seasons ridiculous. usually go for half a year. It's season 2. It no? just feels like 5 years. The difference is it between year us and two? Most yeah. TV series, they turn bad after like a second season, right? Yeah. 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 Well, this is going to be like uh, Game of Thrones. It's all going to come crashing down. Or, uh, or the reverse. I think we're going to do a Breaking Bad and have our best season in season five. <laughs> All right, roll intro. Also very stressful. <laughs> Okay, welcome everyone to the Paradox podcast. We're back after a long summer vacation and lots of other things that have taken priority over this. But here we are. And uh, it's season five, apparently, episode one. So that's very cool. And we have a very special guest with us, which is Ebba Jungerud. Hello. Our, our great leader. Hello. Hello Ebba. Welcome, Ebba. Fearless leader. Welcome no. to the podcast, Ebba. <laughs> Thank you. We just realized that you haven't actually been on the podcast I know. Yet. This is a big, uh, it's a big step. thing for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've that's been here 13 months asking every so, month. So, uh, But here I am. And, and so go. this is a podcast where we discuss the... Uh, Business of the video games industry. Aha. Yes, mm-hmm. we talk about the things that are generally not talked about and try to shed a bit of light on them. So this okay. is what you pay me and chums for. Yes, yeah, okay, for... very, very good to know. Very good to know. Oh shit! <laughs> yes. Okay. No. no. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes, I have actually listened to the podcast Great. before, so I do know. Cool. So the whole yeah, as chums is saying, the whole point of this is to try to shed a bit of light on the uh, the mysterious workings of Paradox Interactive, why we do the things we do, and hopefully make us all seem a bit more human <laughs> in the process. Yeah, we are. We're lots of. And the rest yes. of the industry as well. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. That is true. Um, this episode we're going to talk, I think we're going to do like a year in review, first re- year in review with you as CEO. Yeah. Just talk a little bit about the big, you know, the things that have happened, sort of big learnings and observations so far, maybe looking a bit forward as well, where we see this going. But as always, we will start by asking the important question, what have we been playing since last time? And last time is like four months ago. So Yes. So Charles, uh, I, will, I want to start. This is, this is what the podcast will be about. Uh, two months ago, I started playing Escape from Tarkov. Mm. It has changed my life. I will, I'll yeah, divi- but you were even tweeting about this yeah. during the summer. I divide yeah. my life into the time before Escape from Tarkov <laughs> and the time after. It is, it, uh, very briefly, it is a super hardcore military shooter. Uh. And I generally don't like those. Uh, but it has the... I've never seen a game that has this high reward and uh, punishing mm. uh, punishment for, for losing. Mm. It's razor thin, and you know it's very realistic. So one bullet basically kills you if it, it hits you in the wrong place, face. Um, <laughs> and then you get, basically spawn into a map with whatever gear you have in your uh, inventory. The better gear you bring, the bigger chance of survival you have. And if you make it out to the other side of the map, you get to leave the map. Mm. You have 50 minutes or mm. something like that. Uh, if you die, you die and lose everything. This is like, I think you said previously, this is like if Paradox made a first-person shooter. This, is the, I, yes, this would be like a good, good fit for us. It's very, yeah, it's still action, but it's definitely yeah, very yeah. much up our alley. It's, 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 it's incredibly hardcore, very fun. I've spent stupid amounts of money on this game. Cool. It has a premium business model, which how, is... How much money have you spent? Uh, like 180 euros. And what do you spend it on? The base game. <laughs> uh, is it like uh, DLC based or is it? Yeah, like- no, it doesn't even have. It's an early access. <laughs> oh right. No, it's a, it has a number of SKUs. I bought the biggest SKU. I, I gradually like in, increased my heroin addiction <laughs> and bought the biggest SKU. It just gives you. It's a season pass as well. Right, it gives right. you small, 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 minute perks. Cool. Escape from Tarko then. What about you, Danny? I went into the basement and dug up my old Wii console. So I've been playing uh, old Wii. I just packed mom down. (laughs) (laughs) Wii games with my kid, who's now uh, five and a half years old. So we're playing, uh, we've played Super Mario, we've played uh, a bit of Zelda. We played a lot of uh, uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns. Mm-hmm. Which is actually a very good game. It's, do you still, do you, did you play with those? Uh, no, because you're too young. No, the, no, no. The I, old ones. No, no, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm, I was here since the first. I'm not young. No, no, no. I'm, no. I'm, well, what I'm are you old. talking about? Like, <laughs> sorry, we, we sorry. have Nintendo. But, no, thumbs, but you know like, the ones, the, the orange one yeah, yeah, yeah. and the white one. Yeah, yeah. 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 The yeah. Nintendo. And I also it. had the little blue one that was like a hospital bed. The Game and Watches. Oh, the Game and Watch. So she's she's going even older back in time. That was before my time. See, it was before. That's how old I am. But yeah. 
yeah, it's very good. And this is for my kid. This is the first time he plays because Donkey Kong Country is kind of a classic to the platformer, right? And for him, this is very new, which is interesting because he's only played 3D games before. Okay. So, but we're really enjoying that. Mm. Uh, I did play quite a bit of Age of Wonders Planetfall, mm. which is the latest game that we yeah, released. Me too. Yeah, me too. actually, I like it. Toting the party line. Yes. <laughs> which which uh, uh, what clan are you? I've on? only played the Vanguard so far. Oh, the, Amazon. That's the only way yeah, to go. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. They're, I'm, I'm, I like, I didn't put too much time into customization, which is actually a pretty big thing. Like, you can yeah. make your, if you haven't played no, it, you I, can I make your faction my, uh, look very Amazon cool. I have Amazon lady, whose name yeah. I can't remember right now, but she has this, like, huge uh, mohawk, oh, nice. uh, yeah. white yeah. mohawk. She's black with a white yeah. mohawk. No, I'm, I'm playing as, uh, Jack is his name, right? The sort of, the guy yeah. on the box yeah. cover. Like, the big, yeah. the big, strong, white man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's my exactly. avatar. Okay. Cool. Um, but it's it's all, yeah, it's good. I haven't played that with my kid. It's a bit too complicated for my kid, but <laughs> it's kind of a nice mix between that and Donkey Kong Country. How about you, Eva? Uh, I've also been playing Planetfall, yep. uh, which I really enjoy. Um, been uh, figuring my way out around the, the world. But uh, what I've been playing mainly is uh, Celeste. Mm-hmm. Uh, a game that I really like. Yeah. On it's, Switch? It's, yeah. No, on uh, on PC. Oh. I started on PC and then I was like, mm, I could do, do it on the Switch. But then I was playing Zelda on Switch and then mm. I got to played Zelda. Anyway, no, but Celeste... Uh, I don't know if people, yeah, people know it because it's a huge game. But it's it's just really, it's cute. Yeah. It's super difficult, I yeah. think. Uh, I die a million times. <laughs> but you can start over quite like <laughs> where you were, okay, kind yeah, of, yeah. which is great. No, it's a, it's a uh, yeah, I like it. Cool, I, I haven't actually tried it. I've heard mm-hmm. a lot of good things yeah, about it, but I haven't it. tried it. So It's is absolutely it? one of the best 2D platformers of this decade. Yeah. Oh, nice. Well, like, it's okay. Uh, like not cool I, your horses. No, 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 I'm serious. Like, remember how good Super Meat Boy was when that came out? Yeah. Celeste yeah. is that good. Yeah. Can you play it with a five year old, or is it too? Yeah. is it too hard for uh, you? You can, but I think I think the whole jumping and climbing, the dash. Yeah, it's it's, it's quite it's difficult. Tough, but like, yeah. so was Super Mario. When yeah, it yeah came that's out. true. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm right. sure you can play it with a five year old. Oh, okay, bold claim. So yeah, I'll have good. to play Celeste. Yeah, next yeah time good now. mix of good mix of. Yeah, good good mix of consumption habits here. In the yeah, like that. <laughs> and we you... should we should before we continue, we should say a big congratulations to the team at Triumph Studios for yes. releasing yeah, Age of Wonders Planetfall. Planetfall. Amazing great, game, yeah. uh, very well received and a labor of love. I think we can yeah. say they've been spending a long time on this, <laughs> and it's also the first game we released together together with yes. them. So we're you know very excited. Ex- extra for all fun. Us. That is yeah, true. and everyone is walking around the office in Planetfall hoodies. Yes, yes. 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 lovely blue Planetfall. Uh, and how I can sent our a photo listeners... to uh, Lennart, yeah. who is uh, the boss in uh, yeah. in the Triumph Studio of everyone in their hoodies. Of course. He was like, yeah, great. Of course. No, yeah. But, <laughs> but it was uh, you know. Can we give a hoodie away to someone? Let's give it yeah. away. The first person who retweets. Send us a screenshot of yourself playing Celeste. Tweet us ah, a screenshot uh, yes. of yourself playing yes. Celeste. Not, exactly. not Planetfall then. Oh, pl- or, or Planetfall. <laughs> Good. Yeah. No, no, no. We're pushing Celeste <laughs> today. No. Uh, um, and then the first one who does that will win. Uh, we'll try to get you a Planetfall. Yeah. yeah, we, we have some. Yeah. I know for yeah. sure. Cool. Okay. So I, I just want to say about Planetfall. It doesn't matter how many times you release a game. Even when you know you've played it, everyone's played it, we know it's good. They're still, yeah, still nervous. very, mm. very nervous mm. when we're releasing. Mm. How will it go? Mm. How will it be received? Yeah, of course. What happens? Mm. It's very fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's very fun. It's, it's mostly mm. relief. Mm. <laughs> and also happy because yeah. of sales. But Okay, relief. let's jump into it. So, uh, we just talked about this before and you've been here for about 13 months now, Eva. Yeah. 13 months in the Almost job. Almost exactly. What date is it? I started 1st of August last okay. year. So what is it now? Yeah. September? Yeah, yeah. September. September. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's let's dig into that. Uh, what have you done? <laughs> so how's, how's the year? How would how's you summarize the year? The year? <laughs> uh, like a learning curve from heaven. <laughs> it's It's been really fantastic. I mean... The the amount of stuff, even though I knew the company and I knew you guys a bit before yeah. I started, it's just you can't compare. It's mm. like hanging around a little bit here and there and actually working in the company on a day to day basis. Yeah. So it's it's been fantastic. I've spent, especially the fall, I spent so much time hanging out with different teams, playing the games a lot, mm. uh, just like getting to know people uh, in the in the company cool. and i've continued to do that but that was like a very big part of the of the first six months yeah. i've also done uh more high level stuff so we in the me and the management team we've done a big uh, review of like where are we as a company where do we want to go what types of games is it that we 
thrive on and not just not I mean obviously financially but more even from a passion point of view culture like, what yeah what types of games do we want to make mm. and and uh, what is paradox in that in that context so you know there, it's a, a lot of um I mean, playing games is quite time-consuming, so that has taken a lot of time. But mm. I, I think it's very worth it mm. just to yeah. to to get to know not just what we do, but also our our fans and our our um, our larger community. Yeah. To, yeah, yeah. What is it that makes people tick, basically? Paradox is, I mean, it's a big company now, right? Yeah, five hundred people almost. Exactly, and we have studios in the in the US and the Netherlands. Obviously, a, a couple of them in in Sweden, not just in Stockholm as well. Um, how have you sort of been dividing your time there? I mean, you obviously spend, your base is the head, headquarters yeah, with so us. So I spend but... most of my time in Stockholm. I've been to all of the studios, uh, a few of them more than once. Mm. Uh, but uh, And then, you know, that's an interesting thing about this industry as well, which I find interesting and weird and somewhat worrying in times of climate change, is that we all seem to travel to different fairs all over the world. Yeah. And I think, like we talked even before this started a little bit about what's going to change in the future. That to me is like a weird thing that will probably change in one way yeah. or another. But so I have spent a lot of time on the road, basically, yeah. uh, meeting with uh, not just our partners, but also a lot of other studios. And this is a very friendly industry, very helpful, very... Um, Did you expect that? Um, I heard it, but it's really nice to see it in action. Mm. You know, it's a, it's a different, like, you can pretty much call anyone in this industry from any uh, studio and ask for help. And people are so happy to give yeah. it to you, which is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, we're, of course, in one way we're competitors, but also not really, because we do different styles of games and, and have different uh, fan bases, etc. Mm. So, so it's, it's uh, yeah, that's a, it's a really, really great and nice part of the industry. It's interesting, right? Because it's an industry that has really kind of only experienced success and growth, like for its 30-year history with some, I mean, some, some exceptions, right? Slumps, but, yeah, sure. but it's like, uh, no, you don't agree? I think it's much more binary than mm. uh, what we think about. In what, what terms do you mean? Well, you know, you can have, you can have, a game that sort of performs, that's fine. But there are some major uh, misses. Of course. Which but I mean, totally on, a, on, a, on, a, and, uh, on an aggregated level, yeah. yes. But yeah. on a studio level, I think it's it can be a total bloodbath. No, 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 that's very, very true. Like, it's oh, very for much. individual yeah. studios and for publishers, I mean, th- fortunes can turn very quickly, but, right? Yeah, exactly. But, but just yeah. the, the market as a whole is just growing and that's growing and growing, true. right? Yeah. Let, so let, me, let me tell you about this little game called E.T. for the Atari. <laughs> <laughs> that's more than 30 years ago, though. That's, that's, that's a good point. <laughs> 30 years ago. <laughs> but it's but part of the industry. That is yeah. true. That is true. But but this, it's just, I think that's interesting in terms of like understanding the kind of the, the culture and the climate yeah. that you're yeah. mentioning. Like yeah. it's very helpful. It's very friendly yeah. because they're, the, you know, the cake is big enough for everyone, right? Yes, and everyone has to gain true. from yeah. working together. It's very different. So we're not nice human beings. It's just everyone. Well, we all right? down. It's, it's like that scene from uh, The Dark Knight, yeah. the boat, right? When the chips are down, uh, <laughs> okay, you Danny. people will eat each other. <laughs> no, but I mean, I'm coming, I'm, I come from the media industry, right? Well, Which is very different. Where it's been on a downward decline downward for the decline. last, yeah. I don't know, 100 50. years. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And it does things with like the, the competition. It, yeah. it makes things yeah. more cutthroat. Yeah, it's different anyway. No, maybe, I, don't, yeah. I think also the way you maybe care about your competitors or whatever yeah. you want to call them. Because so in, in our is industry, we don't need to, we only need to care about our competitors or, you know, other companies in the industry in a positive way. Exactly. Mm. Because yeah. we're unequivocally that, happy when Larian does yeah, well. Yeah. We're, we're happy for them yeah. and also as gamers because and we, we get play to play the games. games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cool. I would like yeah, to add so, one yeah, more yeah, yeah. thing. I th- I've also, um, uh, you know, the people who work here are really clever, yes. really smart, and really, uh, um, they everyone here really gets it. Yeah. Not just like, uh, I mean, it depends what you do, of course, but... Shams how doesn't to, really get it. No, that's <laughs> true, but most people here <laughs> really get true. it. <laughs> no, but you know, it's really cool to come into a group of such... Incredible passion and skill, yeah. and you know, of course, we make mistakes and we oh, we try to figure things out as yeah. we go along. But there's this like drive for doing something good for onwards the, and upwards, onwards and upwards, and also in that the fans are very much a part of that, mm. which I think is super cool. Yeah. That there's like a huge respect for the people yeah. who buy our products. Yeah. 
that I love. Yeah. Uh, my quick question was, uh, d- did you, in your interaction with outside partners, did you, were you surprised in their view of paradox? Did it did um, it match your view of, or did you think that our standing was where it was, or was it different I mean, in some way? I think pretty much anyone in this industry who cares were a bit surprised when my name came up for this role. Because... Uh, not because I'm a woman, because I'm not the classic gamer as no. such. And Paradox is known, especially I think outside of us, is known as like the most hardcore gaming company yeah. out there. So it's a bit like, but how are you going to fit into this culture? And uh, and how, what are you going to contribute with? And I, yeah. and I think, I mean, first of all, I think the culture is very easy to fit into. It's a very welcoming environment. Uh, and second, my job, I mean, to to have a CEO of this size company who whose primary interest is to be a hardcore gamer. I don't think that's no. the... It's not like the key competence for this right. role. Of course, there, it's very important to get the products, understand the fans, know and respect them. That, But that doesn't mean that there, there are also other qualities to a CEO, especially when you're in this growing uh, phase that we're in. Mm. So that was more like what I... What I brought to the mix, the cake mix. What would you say then, sort of one year in, what what do you see as the sort of most important, not priorities, but the most important f- function of you in this role for, for the company? I, I think I, it's really hard and mm. I, I uh, uh, this is something that I continuously work with and mm. we as a management team need to continuously work with. For, for listeners, Shams and Daniel are both on the management team, so they are also a part of this. But anyway, it's it's very much about um, getting people in the company to see where we're going mm. and why we're going there. And that's like a continuous uh, job. It's not something you do once and then you're done. You have to yeah. do it all the time. And And one thing that's unusual with this industry compared to not all other industries, but it's very R&D heavy. Uh, so it's probably more similar to like... Uh, uh, biotech or mm. or even the movie industry that the the um, the industry moves incredibly fast like if you just look at distribution for instance that I know you guys talk about a lot that has changed so much in just one year's time yep. and and it's changed multiple times in this one year so it's not just you know it changed and it stayed the same whereas the games development projects are super long they're at least i would say 3 4 years so that mix makes it really uh, it's quite difficult to to uh, to do a strategy that is both set in the long term and very flexible in the short term, and it also makes it a little bit difficult to uh, to explain yeah. where we're going. For take streaming, for example, which or the cloud gaming, which is uh, something that today doesn't work at all. Mm. I mean, you can do it in in test uh, versions, yeah. and Google, of course, with Stadia is working on it. Microsoft is working on it, etc. But it's but still, it's not an existing market. No, it's not, exactly. It's not and, a consumer ready. And then, like, okay, so let's just for the sake of the argument say that in five years' time, we think that X percent is going to be. Uh, gaming from a cloud. Okay, so how do you like envision that journey that we need to do to get yeah. there? So those things are are they're fun and challenging, but yeah. they are quite difficult. And so. also looking backwards, obviously the the games that are coming up to release for us now, yeah. those projects were signed and funded and started at a time when streaming was just yeah, like no. uh, yeah. somewhere in the yeah. future, maybe yeah. thing. Epic Game Store didn't exist. Exactly. Yeah. Games, uh, cuts were different. Subscription were models didn't really exist. Uh, yeah. so. And even retail, like physical copies. Exactly, yeah. that's, when, when I started, I had a discussion with some guys, not actually in the industry, but still, and they were like, no, no, that's never going to go away. And I'm like, of course it's going to go away. Mm, but mm. I don't know when it's going to go away, but it's I mean, nothing else has not gone that route. Yeah. So... You know, there will be collector's items, yeah, absolutely, yeah, but yeah. it's not going to be... I mean, I, I think in the beginning of last year, it was still like almost 50% of console sales were retail. Yeah, exactly. Which now, or, yeah, a year and a half later has gone down. Which puts us in a very interesting position, uh, we, which we talked about in this podcast, I think, where we, you know, we have an ambition to grow uh, our, our sales on, on console. <gasps> and, you know, we're making good progress and things are, are, are improving. But at the same time, we have very little history of physical... I mean, looking way back, no, we no. have obviously, uh, but for the past, 
for the ten. foreseeable past. 2010, already yeah. 2010, yeah. 50% of our distribution was digital. Exactly. Which yeah. at that point yeah. was like completely unique. Yeah. But so we actually come from a sort of place where we work almost exclusively with digital distribution and we're trying to move into a space yeah. that where, where physical distribution is still enormously important. Yeah. But we all agree that it's probably not going to be like that in the future. So it's an interesting sort of short term yeah. versus long term. Yeah. Let, let me, uh, let me ask you, when we talk about these different perspectives and, and an added perspective, when we mentioned this before, is that Yes, the dev cycle is three and a half years, but once the game is live, it lives for another, you know, yeah. seven to ten years. Yeah. So that's an even longer cycle, yeah. Yeah. which makes this disruption-heavy industry really silly. Like, who can imagine what's going to happen in seven years? Uh, when you talk about the difficulties of communicating these perspectives, what's is it? Who's the hardest to communicate this? I'm guessing the stock market that work on a quarterly basis, uh, n- or like who? Yeah. But we, I mean, we have a lot of respect for our owners and mm. we want our, like all of our owners, we have quite a lot of owners. Uh, but but the way we work as a company is we don't um, focus so much on the quarterly results and we don't focus so much on the share price because we know it's so long term. Do, do you think that this, you know, traditional investors are trying uh, coming to grips with this and understanding um, this? It varies. I think they want to. I think everyone understands why this is important for us. But it is also very hard when a whole market is driven by quarterly results. And I don't mean our market. I mean the mm. whole stock market. Yeah. So, of course, it it's, can be difficult to see uh, to see that. I think we have... Uh, and so the way it works is we, of course, have our owners. And then there are analysts who look at our company and they try to guess how we will perform on a quarterly basis. And for them, it's really difficult to know because, first of all, we don't give out that much information. And second of all, uh, things vary a lot. And, and sales numbers for us, which are, of course, what drives the the revenues, uh, they can fluctuate so much. And it's yeah. th- this is coming back to this. It is a slightly binary business where, you know, hit or miss can yeah. break or make a company. Mm. For for context, we have we all we have and we always have had a very restrictive approach to, uh, you know the 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 amount of information that we share with the the market. We we uh, typically do not give forecasts, for example. No. We don't share no. any information about what we think certain games will deliver in terms of sales. So it's it's uh, looking at the outside. There's there's not a lot of information to go yeah. on in terms. I of actually them. think uh, 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 many of them do a great job. <laughs> yeah, They're no, really good, and they've yeah. really made an effort to understand us and understand our games but it's still difficult mm, for them exactly yeah. so so th- uh, that was a very long answer to your question the short answer is no <laughs> <laughs> uh, I uh, to me it's much more important with internally mm. um, uh, to, to make sure that people like if you work let's say you're a developer on uh, Europa Universalis yeah so how is where we're going in 2025 relevant for me today yeah. and that's the process that we're in right now to to make sure that people see where where they are in the bigger picture and also why because you know we can talk about financial numbers but at the end of the day what drives that is how many people love our games yeah and and like how do you convert money to love or or vice versa so that that's something that we're in right now so how how do you do that uh that's it's interesting we talked about we're a big company right with people in lots of different countries there's nearly 500 people now how do you how can how can we make sure that everyone gets as you say, where we're going and how that how that relates I, to that. First of all, them. I think we can be much better at it. Yeah. I can be much better at it. Uh, I think we need to talk in those terms, talk about games rather than numbers. And that's easy to see in hindsight. No. We've talked, I think, a little bit about... Because I thought that people actually wanted to know numbers uh, because that was the feedback I got at the mm. time. But I realized in hindsight that that's not really... Even though that might have been what came out. It wasn't what people meant. So that's something that we're trying to adjust a little bit now to uh, to talk more about, okay, so how is this relevant for games? Yeah. Not so much the aggregated uh, yeah. amount. And, and speaking from yeah. experience, having been here for a while, like we've had goals for the company that yeah. have been very financial. Yeah. Then the, the, sometimes get the criticism that these are too... Uh, they're not inspirational enough. Yeah, and exactly. Then we have Which fuzzier we, I, I goals, get that. Yeah. and then then we get the feedback that yeah. we're not concrete enough. Yeah, you're never going to please everyone, but it's it's important to still Different understand goals, what drives yeah. our guides. And and I I would say no matter where you work in this company, the drive is really the games. Mm. It's yeah. not uh, 
But but then you could say, okay, so how do you measure a love love for a game? Well, you could say you measure it by how many play it every month mm. and by if they want to uh, spend money to, to yeah. play the game. So so of course, yeah, maybe it can be converted, but it's still semantics becomes very important here. Mm. So let's let's spend a bit of time uh, on uh, on looking looking to the future. Uh, looking ahead, yeah. Uh, we've got a pretty exciting year ahead of us, and obviously there's a lot of interesting stuff happening in the industry. Yeah. What do you, from your perspective, Eva? What are the big sort of things that you're you're looking forward to or seeing as important? Well, first, I have to mention, which I'm very much looking forward to, is of yeah. course BDXCon. Yeah, coming up in October. That that I think in will Berlin. be extremely exciting in it's in less, Berlin. Less than two months. Yeah, I'm starting to yeah. sweat. <laughs> Stress, stressful. Stress, no, but I think uh, it's going to be super, super, super cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm extremely excited about that. And then back to what you said before, Shams, that it's the the game releases are terrifying and exciting. And we have a couple of game releases coming up. Yeah. We have uh, Bloodlines. We have Empire of Sin. So you know those. Mm. Uh, we might have something else up our sleeves mm-hmm. if we're lucky. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if all things go to plan, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Which almost never happens, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah. That's another learning. <laughs> Nothing ever goes as planned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but so those things are are of course extremely exciting. Yeah. And then on a more on a more uh, internal level, uh, I'm I'm quite excited about this. Like trying to get. To, to be, become better at communicating where mm. we're going. Mm. And, uh, that's more of a personal thing and internal. But yeah, uh, yeah that's mm. super important to me as well. So we've got, obviously, Empire of Sin, which we announced at uh, E3 this year, which is a f- pretty cool, or very cool-looking uh, tactical um, strategy game made by the very talented folks at uh, Romero Games, uh, set in sort of a 1920s Prohibition-era gangster's paradise. Uh, and then we've got Bloodlines 2, which is our highly anticipated sequel to one of the, I would say, all-time classics of, of uh, role-playing, PC role-playing games, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, uh, which we announced at GDC this year. Yep. Feels like 10 years ago, yep. but it's not. Yeah. <laughs> yes, um, agreed. <laughs> I, think, I think in particular Bloodlines is, is very interesting for us because it's, 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 really, uh, it's really a new niche for paradox yeah. it's it's not what you would call a traditional paradox game it's not a strategy game it's not really the kind of stuff we've done in it's, the past it's not a simulation game per se exactly no but i mean we have done we have been dabbling in mm. rpgs yes oh for uh, sure that is true so so it's not completely new i think i i actually think in that genre yeah. it's still quite niche mm. yes. yes i agree with that so yeah. so i think what, what what's different with this game maybe from most of our other games is the whole like sandbox versus linear and mm. uh, the story driven story given to you side of the game and and for us this is a beginning rather yeah. than the the end so it's not really we don't see it as a one shot of course it depends on how it goes and if it's yeah. you know if if people uh, like it but but it's very much something so it's not like we don't see this as okay if this doesn't sell a gazillion gabillion copies then we're not going to yeah, go back yeah. into this we we i mean we bought the world of darkness ip catalog for a reason and we want to be in this yeah. world yeah i think so, uh, we've been pretty open with the fact that uh, i mean if had we been able to make a Skyrim mm. scoped Bloodlines we experience. We uh, absolutely yeah. would have done that yeah. because we think that that's the, a thousand hour game experience is, is, is better business. And, than but, that and it's also it. who we are. Yeah. Exactly who we are. But making that overnight is quite difficult yeah. and you have to go start somewhere and I think we often look at our uh, uh, neighbors in Poland, the CDP. Who made The Witcher and the kind of the journey they We're had? We're going with. straight for cyberpunk, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you don't go for cyberpunk right away. You start with Witcher One, Witcher Two, and then Witcher Three, right. and it's uh, I don't know where Bloodlines is in in the equivalent there, but it's somewhere along the line. And yeah. It's, yeah. it's it it's an indication. And of that's direction. how we work, and I think that goes with anything. We work long term yeah. with with our our titles. We have done many one offs throughout the years, but our intention. It's not yeah, to do yeah, that. No. And so. I th- as you mentioned, I mean, world of, the World of Darkness is an amazing uh, IP uh, and sort of brand portfolio with amazing depth and so much history. And we really see, the, I think we all agree that there's a lot of potential in this. There's, a, there's potential to really make this into something special. And this is really the first step 
uh, on that path, I would say. Sure. But I think I think the point I was trying to make, which is something we had a discussion about yesterday as yep. well, is that oh, yeah, yeah. whilst whilst all and this kind of ties back to your point about uh, you know communicating where we're going yeah. and making everyone aware of the direction we're heading in. Like we all have a pretty clear idea of how this fits into what paradox is and yeah. what paradox wants to be. Like we mentioned, it's still niche, and there's yeah. you know to me it's pretty clear how this fits into the identity of us as a publisher. Uh, but I think that's something that that again coming back to your point about about things that we should do in the year ahead is is finding ways to 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 make sure everyone gets this and everyone understands yeah. contextualize this, right? it yeah, yeah yeah i mean yes it's niche but it's still an action rpg yeah, which yeah, is quite yeah, absolutely. different from something yeah. like europe yeah. universalis how does that fit with the paradox identity how is that still uh how can you match that up yeah. with, with who we are and where we want to go right and there we come to the long and short term i think the first yeah. one potentially is it's not super easy to see how that fits yeah. it's the long-term ambition exactly. that fits with yeah. Paradox. Yeah. 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 so that's interesting that's something yeah. to come back to maybe uh, 20 yeah. years into the future <laughs> <laughs> <No>. 2041 <laughs> exactly. yeah. Yeah. cool before we wrap this up i want to ask uh uh any sort of big uh, i don't want to say challenges of the year past but like maybe I want. To, I almost want to say disasters that you want to share with the listeners. Well, but, biggest you know, learnings. Biggest that's learnings. learnings. That's a good way of of, of because of it's saying not it. a softball okay, year. So it's one yeah, exactly. Learning. It's been a turbulent year, right? So yeah, um, I, I, there have been a lot of things that I'm actually not going to be able to discuss here mm -hmm. that we have worked out. Uh, they have been quite difficult and a little bit stressful when they happened, but but uh, we've managed to work through them and that's where I've seen a lot of this like helpfulness in, in our company as well and the willingness to not put blame on people but actually mm. solve things so a lot of those but I think more on the um, getting to learn and understand and learn how to to uh, talk to people when you talk one to five hundred it's like uh. a really weird communication when where so and it's and I get a lot of feedback which I really appreciate but I've done some mistakes there in how I've uh, phrased things mm. uh, which of course weren't intentional but the way they were interpreted would was not how I meant yeah, them and course. and and I think that's you know it's to to some extent that that might always happen because it's this weird one to five hundred communication sure but. It's made me more uh, aware of how I phrase myself. What's what's important for me there is that it doesn't mean that I stop communicating, mm -hmm. you know. And that's so. So that's something that I think about a lot. That it's important to have a have some sort of flow going all the time. And now, also a year in, I think that a lot of people in the company have come to realize that I'm I'm actually very approachable. So you know, if you said. Anyone in the company can send an email and we go for a coffee. And that's, I love that. It's great. That doesn't mean that we, you know, make decisions because that has to go through managers and teams. And there's a lot of planning that goes into that. But, it, but you know, so, so that's very important to me. Uh, and then uh, I think one of the biggest like hiccups, no, not hiccups, but that was when we had our Christmas party here in Stockholm. And I said that I was going to, I thought it was a fun idea if I sang the first karaoke song because we're such a karaoke company. <laughs> What I didn't realize was A, that it's so much more difficult to sing with a live band. No. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And then Come also on. the guy, the singer of the live band, he's like, yeah, great. You can do the first song. I'm just going to do the first one to, you know, get the crowds <laughs> going. And he's a great singer. Yeah. So I have to follow up in this like amazing singer. And yeah, I don't know. It was okay, but it was very <laughs> stressful. I was like almost shaking. Yeah, so that's that. That was the um, not, not my best karaoke uh, <laughs> performance, I don't think. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. pretty good. Okay, that's thank good. you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, So yeah, we we mentioned PDXCon. PDXCon is coming up in about two months. Uh, it's going to be the biggest one yet. Um, and we actually know that now because we've sold sold some tickets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, It's happening in Berlin. Uh, we're going to be shouting about that everywhere. So if you're sort of following Paradox anywhere, you won't miss it. But if you're one of the lucky thousands, I want to say, who have bought a ticket, we look forward to seeing you there so much. You're obviously going to be there, Abba. Absolutely. Uh, there's going to be lots of stuff happening. I think we're going to do live podcasts if all things go as planned. So it's, that's going to be very, very cool. It's planned for us to do a live podcast. Uh, Good. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see if it happens. <laughs> it won't Plans be streamed, but uh, uh, it'll be uploaded after the fact, at least. 
Good stuff. So that's going to be exciting. Uh, and yeah, thank you so much, Eva, for, for coming thank on the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. having me. We'll see you in a year. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have you back in a year. Great. Uh, as always, if you're listening, we're on uh, the Paradox Forums. We're on Twitter. We're, we're everywhere. So just ping us with your feedback. Let us know what you want us to talk about. If you've stumbled upon this podcast and you're not yet a subscriber to it, please smash that like button. Uh, or a subscribe button. And it's good for our KPIs. It's good for our KPIs. Uh, <laughs> it makes my upcoming salary talk with Abba easier. <laughs> and we shall see you in a couple of weeks for the next episode. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.